Hello, my name is Maxwell Sorensen. I work with Dr. Sherry Yunello. Today I'll be talking about gamma ray detection in DAPR. DAPR stands for the Detector Array for Photons, Protons, and Exotic Residues. And it was constructed to measure the photon strength function of both stable and exotic nuclei. Iron-60 is one such exotic nuclei that, that we are interested in. So Iron-60 has been detected in space, on the moon, in Antarctic snow, and even in Earth's seabed. Its half-life and associated gamma rays makes it potentially useful in tracking the evolution of certain stars. So the photon strength function is needed uh, in order to obtain a strength for astrophysical models. In addition, a low energy enhancement in the photon strength function, uh, an upbend, has been observed in other iron isotopes. And the presence of an upbend in neutron-rich nuclei could have large impacts in the R process uh, nucleosynthesis. As such, we have conducted an iron 57 uh, DP to create iron 58 experiment to measure its photon strength function and characterize DAPR and with an eye to uh, uh, for future developments and to create an uh, experiment for the iron-60 measurement. Let's now move on to the experimental setup. So, DAPR consists of 128 tightly packed barium fluoride detectors, which will be used to detect the gamma rays coming off from the excited residues produced in DP reactions. It also consists of a uh, annular silicon detector, which will be used to detect the proton that comes off from a DP reaction and in order to de deduce the excitation energy of the residue. In addition, we have a Faraday cup at the end of the line in order to keep a tab on what the beam current is. In addition, both uh, CD2 and carbon targets are used in the case of stable runs in order to subtract off uh, contamination uh, from associated with the uh, carbon component of the CD2 target. In addition to running iron for these seven, we also ran carbon-13 in order to create carbon-14. Carbon-14 has discrete states at fairly high excitation energy, which allows us to clearly gate on discrete states in order to test DAPR's efficiency and energy resolution at higher energies than a normal source would provide. On the right plot, I show the excitation energy we calculated from the proton versus the sum of gamma ray energies in the barium fluoride detectors. The black line shows the complete capture line. As you can see, the upper shows a large yield along the slide, indicating, indicating good efficiency. If I gate on the first excited state in carbon-14, we can get the plot on the right, showing the ESUM spectrum. I have included the bin corresponding to zero gamma collection as a reference. From this plot, we calculate that our probability of seeing something from the 6 MeV photon is 73%. With complete capture within 1 MeV, uh, the full energy is around 48%. Gamma rays have an unfortunate habit of scattering detector arrays, leaving parts of their energy in neighboring detectors. As such, we use a method called clustering to add neighboring detectors' energies together in order to get a better energy and multiplicity reconstruction of the event. A good test of our ability to reconstruct an actual accurate picture of the decay we are seeing is with a sodium gamma ray source. In the top left plot, I show the cluster multiplicity distribution for a sodium source run in blue, overlaid by a scaled background run in red. In this plot, I am requiring that the ESOM is within 200 keV of the expected sum of the three gamma rays sodium-22 produces when it decays. As you can see, the distribution is dominated by molt-1. However, this appears to be entirely due to the background. When the background is subtracted, we get the plot to the right of it which is now peaked at multiplicity 3, which is the correct multiplicity. On the bottom, I showed the sodium-22 clustered gamma ray spectra overlaid on top of the background. Once more, we subtract the background and we can see the plot on the right, which shows clearly the 511 peak and the 1275 peak, along with a, 20, a tiny sum peak. We have also started looking into using machine learning to better reconstruct the gamma rays being produced in these events. We have seen some initial success in this, uh, even as compared to the clustering method. Uh, however, further research and development is required before uh, using it to help extract photon strength functions. Uh, I don't have enough time to fully talk about this, uh, but if you have questions about it, uh, feel free to ask me. So our future plans is to finish analyzing the iron 58 data. To, we also wish to compare to a direct neutron capture reaction experiment done at DANCE at Los Alamos. 
And we also want to continue to explore and implement alternative methods of reconstructing the gamma rays using the neural networks. Uh, we also are currently in the process of developing a ways to account for cobalt impurities in RF-8 uh, uh, radioactive beams. And in the future, a iron-60 beam experiment will be conducted.